Mm -hmm. We live? Yes, we are. Hello and welcome to Living Abroad. My name is Alex and in this video we're going to talk about why you should retire early. 10 reasons. So I'm going to go ahead and define what retirement is regarding this topic or this live stream and I'll give you guys 10 reasons why you might consider retiring early. Today is Monday morning in the Philippines at 9 a.m. Gloomy and cloudy. I just woke up an hour ago and I'm still trying to wake up. So um, yeah, I will wait till some more people join here and I'll go ahead and get started. So uh, Peter says, yeah, give me, <laughs> give everyone 100 million and see how many still want to work until 80 plus years. Yeah, it's true. I don't think many people will choose to do that. I don't know, but I'd rather spend a travel and expenses, even if the expenses are young, or purchase it and working. Okay. So Peter says he'd rather like spend on travel and experience it, even if it's expensive when young, compared to saving and working and repeating until 50 years old and retire when you feel tired. Some great points. We're going to get into all that. Um, yeah, guys, if you can see me and hear me, as usual, please leave it in the comment section. And as we go through the list of 10 reasons to retire early, um, we're going to go and address all your questions and, of course, kind of veer off topic like usual. So uh, we'll get started very soon. Let me know if you can hear me and see me. I'll have a sip of my water and we'll get started. <clears throat> now, first of all, I want to define what retirement is um, on this video, at least. Uh, when I say retire, I don't mean like completely just sit on a beach forever. Of course, retirement um, is a definition of when you're working, when you can stop working and collect your pension uh, and also have some kind of stable income. But for the sake of this video, when I say retirement, I mean not working a nine to five every day, not going and working for somebody else and making them rich. I'm talking about doing things the way you want and having time for yourself. This doesn't mean you completely have nothing to do. Perhaps it means one or two hours of managing emails or having some kind of passive income to like, um, things like that. So that's when I say when I say retirement, I mean, it's your time, you have more time for yourself than to give to another company or work that way. So we'll get into all that in a second. Um, James Nixon's here. Hey, Alex, great. Attend another live stream. Um, this should be a good, good topic. Yes, I think many of us don't want to work anymore. Uh, I don't think anybody actually wants to work. It's just a matter of they enjoy their job. And they have a job because they need to pay for their finances. I don't think any sane person would want to work just to be working. Now, of course, a lot of people want to keep busy. And that doesn't mean you can't have a hobby or have a project or a cause when you're retired. That just means you're not forced to go into work just to earn something, right? And so that's something we're all trying to avoid. Another James. So many Jameses already. <laughs> Damn, Alex. <laughs> Always on the grind. Uh, for people who think this job is easy, think again. What's up, Alex? Not my James. Yeah, I am always on the grind. Every day I put hours and hours on the YouTube channel. So right now we're scheduled for lives Saturday mornings, Monday morning, and Thursday evenings. So that's three lives. And I typically put out about three videos a week as well. Uh, the last one was uh, still with Trinidad from, no, that wasn't the last one. We had another one, me shopping in the local markets to buy some produce, show you guys some fruits and vegetable prices. I did my laundry and got water for a week. And I took you guys for a tour around some of the open markets here in Cebu City. If you haven't checked out that video, of course, take a look at that. Uh, it was a lot of fun for me to make just to interact with the locals. <clears throat> All right, so I guess you guys can hear me. We have over 20 people already on the live, so let's get into uh, reason number one. I wrote this on my phone so we can um, go ahead and uh, <laughs> keep everything in mind, right? So. The first reason why you want to retire early is financial independence. Obviously, early, ret early retirement gives you the freedom to be financially independent by allowing you to control your money and your own, like on your own terms. So when you retire early, you have a lot more control over your money as where you want to spend it. And that's the number one reason. Of course, if you're older, let's say you're in your 60s or 70s, maybe when you finally retire, you don't have as much option to where to spend your money. A lot of that probably will go either to your health and how to manage like your body at that point. But you might have a lot of expenses, perhaps for your home or uh, grandchildren at the time, maybe you just put in money. But when we retire early, some of those things aren't quite there yet. And you have complete independence over your money and you get to spend it on things that you actually want to do. Now, yeah, so to have control over your money is a big thing because a lot of us have a budget. And of course, I want to be here and spending money on all kinds of things in the Philippines, but I too obviously have a budget 
I need to stay at a place where I'm renting, what I'm putting towards food and everything else that's in between, right? So that's one good thing about retiring early. Um, Peter's here, it says, see, we're all in great shape and thinking about future retirement or not work for someone, but think about all the millions of people who can't even feed themselves, wish there was ways we can help. Yes, of course, I mean, that is the dream, right? That is the ideal, perfect world where nobody has to work and everybody has food on the table. It, anybody that's watching the stream is already in a, probably the 99th percentile. So you guys that have a phone or a TV or a laptop that you're watching this live stream, we're the lucky ones. Of course, there's billions probably of people that can't, maybe not billions, but hundreds of millions that don't have access to just simple internet or to watch something or have the, the means of affording a phone where they can actually enjoy live content like this. So we're already ahead of the game. So this is for the regular folk, the working people that are maybe considering retirement. Somebody that's maybe in their 50s and can still work, but also has the option of retiring early. This is 10 reasons why they should take that option. Maybe do it sooner than expected or planned. Um, Tetrich Unstable Freak. Uh, hi, Alex. I was just uh, recently in Cebu City. Uh, but I was really busy seeing doctors and some family members. Maybe we can see each other sometime this year. Yeah, definitely, Jeff. No, nope. of course. By the way, about seeing each other, today is the day where I'm having my first official meet and greet here in Cebu City. So if anybody's in town or around, feel free to come uh, and say hello. It's at 1 p.m. at the One Nito condo here in Cebu City. I've put all the information in the community tab on the YouTube channel. So you guys take a look at that. If you're around, come by and say hello. Um, Philip Mass is here. Hello, Alex. Uh, in a dilemma, I'm, I'm in my peak earning years, but can only dream of retirement. Is that wrong thinking? I don't know. I can't really speak for people, right? Like, I don't know your specific situation. If you're earning money, that's what we all live for technically in a weird way. You go to school for years and years. You go to university. You try to find a good job, and you finally start earning. And that money is what allows you stability, allows you access to things that you want to do and, and get like a new phone, maybe a bigger TV, a, a nicer car, a bigger home, you know, a better furniture. Yeah, all that is great. But some of us, like myself, that don't have uh, not ambition, but I don't care for those things, then it's, it makes sense to live for myself and travel and set, gain experiences, meet different people, right? So if you have a family, if you have kids, and, and those are your priorities, those are responsibilities. And if you're not quite ready to retire, then I would say, yeah, continue making that money. But if you're by yourself, I don't know, because here's the dark truth. We don't know if we're going to even make it to retirement. A lot of men just die, right? So especially because, our, you know, men die earlier than women. But my point is, you're not guaranteed to live forever. Just because you put in the work, just because you go to, you know, go to school, do all that stuff, it doesn't guarantee you life for, for a long, you know, until you're old. Some of us pass away early and then you never really got a chance to explore and experience. A lot of times we put everything off and procrastinate, think, oh, we'll do it next year, next year. And before you know it, you're like, you know what, that was just an old dream I had and I never did it. For me personally, I say if you have the option of retiring early, definitely do it. It's, it's worth every single dollar that you don't make because cost of living becomes cheaper as well you may not need all that money that you're making now so i don't know if we were a specific situation but i would still definitely consider retiring early instead of um you know pushing it to later samantha jones miss jones is here uh cuban american that's uh always lovely to have you on the channel and the live samantha welcome we're just going over 10 reasons to retire early let's go to number two and we'll get back to the comments guys so the second reason is you can pursue your passion. When you retire early, you have the energy, the time obviously, because you're no longer working as much, and you can actually pursue your passion. A lot of people have things they've always wanted to do, but couldn't because they're working a nine to five job. Like myself right now, I'm pursuing my passion, which is travel. I'm not quite retired, but I'm not working for somebody else. I can take a week off right now if I really want. So that's what I call retirement. So you, I could take two weeks off, probably three. I could take a whole month off without putting a single minute into YouTube if I want, because I have been doing this continuously for almost a month here. I have videos ready. I have 10 videos already made and edited, not edited, but just made at least that I could put out. My point is because I had the time to put that into my passion. If I were to be working a nine to five job, you spend an hour commuting, an hour commuting back maybe, 
by the time you have dinner or lunch, you might have a couple of hours to yourself if you're lucky. You think I'm going to be out there trying to make videos when I'm that tired after working for somebody else? No way, Jose. So yeah, you can pursue your passion. That is the second good reason to retire early. And you can do things you've always wanted to do. And we're not even talking about all the other things that is a factor for now. We'll just go down the list and we'll get to the rest later. Um, Billy is here. Billy, Billy, Billy. I plan to retire early. That's great. I think how much I need to budget for the Philippines is... I can't stand this stupid news feed. It's annoying. Sorry, guys. The window is annoying. Every time the mouse goes anywhere near the bottom, this whole news feed page pops up and I have to like exit it so I can read your questions. Sorry, one moment. <clears throat> Billy says, I plan to retire early. Uh, just thinking how much I need to budget for the Philippines, 50 to 70K pesos a month, living a good life similar to yours. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a great amount. 70K, even 50K if you're not really spending on women drinking booze and partying or whatever else. Um, for example, I keep mentioning this if you guys have been watching these lives, but this apartment is only 22000 all-inclusive. So let's say you get one for 30 even because this is a good one. I know the owner and I got lucky a little bit given the location and all that. So let's say realistically you find an apartment that's 30,000 pesos a month and then you have about 40,000 Let's just make it even 30,000. Let's budget for 60,000 pesos, 30 for your rent. You have 30 left every day, sorry, in a month. So that's 1,000 pesos a day. Now it's difficult to spend 1,000 pesos a day unless you're looking to spend it or have a, a girlfriend or wanna go shopping or go to islands. But once you're here, you get rid of all those things within the first two weeks or so. Let's say you check out all the islands, you do the touristy things, vacation time's over, now you're living like a regular routine life and don't forget when you're doing that you're saving money so you're obviously saving money on rent by staying somewhere long term reducing the price you're going to start eating things that are local perhaps or nearby so you're not going to fancy restaurants every night trying to impress somebody or get the best view or experience so when you live long term in any country you're saving money so of course you can easily i think in my opinion with my lifestyle i'm going to do a full cost of living video in the future it's just a lot of work to break everything down because I want to do it properly. I want to show like prices and all that. So that's coming in the future for sure. So you get a better idea of how much it is for me to live here. But 70K is a good, good goal. Even a thousand pesos a day is really, really good. So 60,000, which is just over a thousand USD. So let's say 11 or 1200 USD, you could live comfortably here. B, if you can eat like Filipino, you can probably make it work at 70K. Honestly, I don't eat like a Filipino and I make it work like 70K. Um, it's like 50 50 for me I, I eat out half the time i eat in half the time not because i can't afford it but because i don't want to just you know you rather it's just for your health you don't want to be eating fast food every day um but yeah, 70k is doable for sure and that's not trying to live like under substandards kind of thing that's living comfortably james says do you ever plan on starting a family i think at this point it will be hard to because I'm gonna be always on the move and you already came this far kind of like being a trucker <laughs> um you know I, I thought about it to be honest family has been some I, like the older i get the more realistically i think about it to be honest if you asked me this five years ago i would say i don't want kids i don't want a family but as i get older and i see a lot of things experience a lot of things I, I could see myself starting a family maybe with the right person i think i'm definitely more open to it and it's still possible i mean i could spend two months at home one month away two months at home one month away and make content during that month uh guys just like anything in life if there's a will there's a way if you really want something in life you can do it and it, whether that's making money or like traveling even family issues you know sometimes you just gotta stand up and live for yourself i know it's tough i know it's not easy a lot of like responsibility especially like i talk to a lot of people in china sometimes at least i did before and the pressure that's on these asian communities of having an excellent career providing for your family, starting a life before 30 as like have given babies, man, this is too much. Like I tell these people, you know, I get all that, the societal pressure, but this is your life. You know, I mean, you don't get more than one. It's like, when will you ever do something for yourself? Like, so when you think of that kind of lifestyle, when you're younger, you go to school for your parents and in your twenties, you try to find a job so you can provide for yourself and save some money for your parents because they raised you. And in your 30s, if you have a kid, you're going to be living for your kid. 
And by the time you're 50 or 60, you're finally in a place where you can maybe start to live for yourself. That's not ideal. I don't think that should be the way life goes. I know it's not it's easy for me to sit here and talk like that because I'm living it. But it is something that's definitely, uh, I think, a lifestyle that people should reconsider if they have the chances. I don't know. I, would, I couldn't do it. Philip Massey says, healthcare is probably the biggest concern with retiring early. Something serious comes up without insurance and it can drain your savings. Yeah, but that's where you have insurance. And what what can seriously happen to you? Like, I'm just saying, let's be realistic. Like, if you have proper insurance, not just travel insurance or just some surface level stuff, there are some great, I don't know them because I didn't research them, but I'm sure there has to be great insurance companies that provide proper health care if something does happen. So you budget for that. You know, you don't go out maybe twice a month. You don't eat that steak that you usually do just so you can have peace of mind if something happens. I think there's a way. I don't think that should be the reason you don't retire early because what if something happens to me? Or what if something happens to you at work and you die anyways, right? Like there's always what ifs, right? And you never really know until you do it. And that's just the reality of life. It's always like hindsight is 2020, as they say. So yeah, so that's reason number two, passion. We'll get through this list but we'll talk about everything else as well. Um, the, th the third one is time with your loved ones. Of course, if you retire early, you have much more time to spend with people that you care about, right? Like um, a lot of times you don't get to see your friends because you're always working, they're always working. You literally have to schedule people in that you grew up with and saw them regularly. Now they're working, you're working, and they have two days to spend with like either their wife, their girlfriend, their parents, their grandparents, their nieces and nephews. And you might fall down the list and next thing you know, you haven't seen each other for six months or whatever, right? And that can happen with anybody in your life. So the third reason to retire early, time with your loved one. Of course, if you're not working, you got a lot of time to put towards that. Uh, hi, Alex. Do you plan to doing any retirement content from Canadian perspective? Canadians have an add up about 30% since our dollar is not strong. And there are different retirement rules in the U.S. Um, probably not anytime soon because I don't intend to stay in a country long enough to apply for the retirement visa. And by the time that I do settle on a country to live permanently, maybe at that time I'll consider making retirement videos. But every other channel, pretty much I would say 80% of the channels here uh, have content regarding retirement because they're all older guys. So maybe check their channels. But nothing specific as far as retirement goes here. Um, I consider myself semi-retired. I, I put work into this, but it's my passion, or at least what I enjoy doing, the live streams and the videos and everything else. So when it comes to the term retirement, when visas and savings and actual how to get your money out here, uh, nothing specific coming from my channel, at least anyways. Philip Massey says, Tim K is a YouTuber who has a family and cranks out the content so it can be done. Yeah, I've heard of Tim K, this guy. Uh, I don't know much about him, but yeah, he's got a family and I guess he does make it work. At some um, spy says, at least one reason to retire in the Philippines to live like a king. Let's address this a little bit. Okay, so people think they come here, they can live like kings. If you're not a king back home, of course, coming to the Philippines, your chances increase of living like a king because your money goes a long way. Uh, but if you're coming here on like a budget and how we're talking here, you live comfortably, but I wouldn't say you live like a king. So to live like a king in the Philippines, you still probably need about 3,000 US a month. Now that still isn't a lot considering, but if you're retired and you know you don't have like a full-time source of income, then 3,000 may not be as easy to come by. And let's say you're working online, okay, but you're still working, right? So if you come here, you have an online job and you're putting in 40 hours a week and your salary is now, let's say 5,000 USD, Yes, money-wise, you have a lot of money and you can live like a king because 250,000 pesos a month is a lot of money here. You could do a lot of things for sure. However, if you're thinking you could come here on a thousand bucks and live like a king, it's not going to happen. Uh, you won't live like a king on a thousand dollars here in the in the Philippines. Uh, you might live like a king compared to someone living in the provinces that has a very, very low income in that sense, but to what you're imagining won't happen. And I was talking to some people a few days ago, and they were really annoyed how YouTubers lie so much about the Philippines. Uh, this gentleman told me he thought he was going to come in here and be drowning in women. And he's like, nobody's even looked at me or <laughs> the people that talk to me are prostitutes and, and they want something from me. 
I'm like, yeah, buddy, nobody is out here just throwing themselves at you, you know, like it's easier to date people. Yeah, of course. But it's not like these Filipinas are going to be just, you know, just because you're white or a foreigner, they're not going to just throw themselves at you. You know, you still got to court them and have like a proper conversation, at least with the decent women. Right. So it's kind of funny how he brought that up. I'm like, yeah. So you say live like a king in some ways. Yeah, that's true. But in some ways, you either have to have a good amount of money when you're coming here or still have a full time job or some kind of online job or passive income. But it is true. Your money goes further here. You get much more than you would in the U.S. or Canada. However, I don't want to be pushing that idea that on a thousand dollars, you can live like a king here. Not very likely unless you go live somewhere away from the major cities. You're living in a province. And at that point, you have much different problems to deal with, like access to, you know, convenience to major supermarkets, cinemas. You're living in provinces. You need to have a motorbike or some sort of transportation. You're worried about like insects and all kinds of things because you're in a tropical forest somewhere. I don't know, hospitals, access to major infrastructure, things like that. Internet won't be a thing for you. So you can't really live like a king here on low budget. You can't, I'm saying, if that wasn't clear enough. Philip Massey says, my reason for moving to the Philippines would be leaving my stressful life, meeting a nice Filipina and living in paradise. I would also want to have a purpose like helping people in need. Yes, you would want that for sure. You you need to have a reason to be here because your Filipina wife is great or a girlfriend. But even both of you guys, how much time can you spend together before you not get sick of each other, but you need to have a purpose. So if helping others is one of them. That will be great. And uh, that's a great dream to have for sure. Um, let's go on to number four. Improve work-life balance. So we kind of touched up on this. Number four, if you're not fully retired and you can still put one or two hours or like in this case, as Philip Massey said, to help other people, uh, you can have much better work-life balance. Now, work doesn't necessarily mean work for money, but it can be work for charity. It can be work for your community, work for yourself as a project. Maybe you're building a house or something. You can have much better balance with that when you're younger. And don't forget, when you're younger, you still have that kind of motivation to do things. Because I know a lot of, I don't know a lot of, but I see a lot of older men doing the same thing over and over here again for hours and hours just sitting in one spot, maybe because they simply don't have the motivation to be active or do something uh, that they're passionate about because at their age, perhaps that kind of faded away, right? Because they just want to relax. So yeah, definitely work-life balance is number four. If you retire early, you can have that. Now guys, before I continue, let me quickly um, talk about memberships again. We have some people that have signed up, but memberships have been launched on the channel. I am offering you guys additional perks like like loyalty badges, stickers, behind the scene footage, bloopers of some of the videos that I make, you know, private members only videos and private polls as well. My WhatsApp number and one hour consultation with me all listed in the different packages on the membership. So if you guys want, take a look at that. I posted a link to becoming a member and everything is laid out there. So please consider becoming a member to directly support myself, this channel, and help with the sustainability of continuing making videos like this and others as well. Now let's go back to some of these things. What are we talking about? <laughs> uh, Billy says, my reason to live in the Philippines would be weather, culture, people, and the malls. All excellent reasons, Billy. The weather here, hit like it's, I still prefer it over the freezing cold of Canada. I complain about the humidity all the time. It's fine still. I'd rather have that over the Canadian cold. Culture, you see it everywhere. Even just in your daily life, walking through some of these neighborhoods, people are just happier, laughing. The way they live their life seems to be much more uh, just happy. So when you see that around you, people singing all the time, there's always events happening. At the malls as well, great places to visit. So many shops, stores, live music, um, karaoke happening. So the malls here are a popular place in the Philippines. Great reasons to retire here, Philly. I agree. JL says, I think you misunderstood my question, but I do understand that the majority of your audience may be coming, so it's all good. No worries. All good. Yeah, no, I understand. Uh, John Calder says, fellow Canadian here, worked 35 years and retired at 55, already married for four years and had a 1K square meter lot with a small house. 
been here for 14 years, my 70th birthday in nine days. John, thank you so much for sharing your experience. Happy early birthday if we don't see you by then. And great for you. Good for you, John. I wonder, do you regret doing this? I don't think you regret it, but tell us a little bit about that. Do you recommend other people to retire early if they're in a position to do so? I would love to know from your perspective because you're living what we're talking about, which is great. Uh, John here has a great life, nice little home, and been living here for 15 years, which is awesome. Okay. Number five, let's read some more. Uh, reduce stress. Now, that is obviously a no-brainer. To retire early, reduce your stress of working all the time. And work is probably the number one reason for stress in many people's life. Even on your days off, you're like worried about going back to work. Oh, Monday, I got to do this. I got to do that. This meeting, this deadline, making these sales or answering to some, you know, a-hole boss or something like that. So when you retire early, you reduce your stress, which is what we all want in life, right? Nobody wants to be stressed out working about forever. You know, at some point, you just, your body, your mind, you just get tired of working. And if it's not for yourself, that's the biggest issue as well when you work for somebody else. So you're making somebody else wealthy. You're making someone else's dreams come true. You're living their dream, basically, by being an employee. Now, I'm not talking down to anybody that's working as an employee, but I'm saying, if you are always stressed at work for those reasons, that might be a reason to retire early if you have the option. And if you're young enough, if you're in 20s and your 30s, I'd say I always like try to promote working for yourself somehow. Like whatever that your passion is, it doesn't have to be YouTube, of course. Earn some kind of passive income and come over here. Spend it in the Philippines. You get a lot more for your money for sure. So, yeah, do that, guys, if you can. If you're young enough, find something in IT. Uh, AI is becoming super popular. Something online. Uh, have some kind of passive income. Uh, real estate is a great way if you're young enough to buy a home. Just I know it's hard, but save up enough money to buy a home. Get somebody to pay for it while you're traveling. They live in your home. And even if the money is not enough to like cover your expenses from your rent that you, your, the home that you're renting out, maybe you can find an online job. And like we just talked to um, Aaron yes last live stream. He was teaching in Vietnam, making 2,000 USD. His rent was only 300 bucks. So he had a great life in Vietnam. You could find jobs like that where you don't even have to be a teacher. The fact that you're a Westerner with a U.S. or Canadian passport is enough. Trust me. All these things you see online where they require a bachelor degree or they want you to have a TEFL or TESOL certificate or your experience. No, none of that matters. That's all just a front. 99% of these schools will accept you as a teacher just for being Westerner. Okay, so all that stuff is for the parents. All that stuff is for try to demonstrate they are let's say a professional school or something. But no, you show up at any of these schools, you say, I'm from Canada, they'll give you a job. They even help you with getting apartments, uh, maybe renting a motorbike. They subsidize a lot of your stuff. They provide free lunch. A lot of these schools give you a TA, it's like a teacher assistant, if you need to help communicating with the students. So, eh, you know, I don't know how we got on this topic. Oh, making money you have to, so you can stress or reduce your stress. And yeah, that can happen for sure. Uh, John says, with my three pensions, I get a little over 100K peso a month after taxes, which I get all back when I do my tax return. Yeah, excellent. So for the 100K, you can live a great life here. That's about two, just under 2,000 now USD. And you can live very comfortably, especially if you're already in a relationship. So you're not out there trying to date and spend money on dates all the time. Your significant other and yourself, because for example, your rent is the same whether you live by yourself or other people. Transportation, you're still getting a taxi, whether it's one person, two people. So some of your costs, if you're living with somebody or have a relationship, uh, definitely goes down instead of just being single and dating people or something like that. Oh, yeah. Craigslist Kijiji says, hello, sir. When is your meet and greet? The meet and greet is today. So the channel, I'm having my first meet and greet today at 1 p.m. at inside Cebu City here at One Needle. If you guys are around, come on by and say hello. So it's today at 1 p.m. So basically after this live stream, depends on how long it goes, I might probably have to just take a shower, get ready, and head down there and see if anybody shows up. I don't know how many people are going to be in Cebu City. I'll be honest. Not many people have confirmed. Many people have told me they just missed it or they're coming later on. So, yeah, I'm not expecting a big crowd, but I just wanted to put that out there in case somebody was around. Uh, Billy says, will you vlog the meet and greet? Maybe. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. If I vlog it, I might just post it on a members page for them to see it. 
I don't know. I'll definitely post some pictures on the regular community page for sure, just like normally. Will you be making a live stream or recording? Hmm. Everybody curious. Maybe not a live stream, but maybe I will. Depends on how many people show up. If it's like three or four people, I don't think it's worth not worth it, but I don't think it makes sense to do a video or a live stream. I might make a video to thank everybody for being there. Honestly, I have no plans. I'll just kind of go and see what happens. I'll bring my camera in case somebody's interested in talking or just wants to be on camera. And that's it. So the meet and greets at 1 o'clock today. I'll post the details right here if somebody wants the address. Um, De De it's called Delish Deli. So John was nice enough to offer his establishment for free if anybody wants to come there. Okay, so here. I will post this in the community or the text here. This is the address, whoever is around in Cebu City. It's the one needle condo on the basement floor. I think uh, the other some other YouTubers had their meet up there. Uh, it's Wang and Sharon Lapu Lapu had theirs there. They had a great time, it looked like. So yeah, it's gonna be hosted there. Moving on to number number six. Number six of why you should travel early for travel and exploration. Now, travel doesn't necessarily mean the Philippines. If you're retiring early, you can travel within your own country, within your own state, your province. You could take travel days anywhere, road trips, camping, sightseeing. You could do a lot of things when you have time to yourself. Imagine every day was a Saturday. So think of it that way. You can do a lot more things. You can explore things when you have time, when you retire early. So these are the things that are some of the benefits of retiring early. You could Because you have the energy to go out there to see some places that you always wanted to see but never had the chance because you're always looking at your watch and say, I only have one day. I don't want to waste it by taking a six-hour drive to some site. So, yeah. And, of course, you always travel abroad, like, you know, live abroad or work abroad. <laughs> so it's a... Uh, the great thing when you have that time to yourself, for sure, you can explore a lot more. Um, Homesteader says, I'm 56 with 4K USD per month pension and nothing holding me here in the States but a house and some fear to pull the trigger and travel to the Philippines. Buddy, you are in a perfect situation. See, this is what I'm talking about. The 4K a month, you're going to be, that's when you can live like a king. I would say put half of that away aside every month spend the 2k over here you can you can still live comfortably and rent out your home and just come over here man i'll help you out i'm gonna be here you got a buddy right here really i'm serious do it do it now do it <laughs> so yeah you should definitely do it if you don't mind i ask what are you paying for rent i do not mind i'm paying 400 usd a month over here uh for my rent it's just a studio so this would not probably be my retirement home if I were to retire here. But the fact that I'm always on the go or travel only a month at a time in the Philippines or two, I'm paying 400 bucks here and it has everything that I need. So everything comes with like fully furnished. You got the bed, the sofa, I got a kitchen, a microwave, fridge, TV, uh, you know, hot shower, a pool, a gym, and it's all inclusive electricity, water, internet included. 400 bucks. You can't go wrong with that, right? And condo dues are included inside of all that. So for 400 bucks, I live a great, simple life in my apartment. I like it. I really have no complaints about this place at all, except for the elevators. But that's not the unit's fault. The elevator is always like busy or jammed or something. But you can't do anything with that. I have no idea what a day. <laughs> I have no idea what day off the week it is. I have no idea what day of the week it is. Yeah. So sometimes you're working so much, you don't even know what day of the week, if it's Friday, Saturday. When I was younger, like Fridays were exciting. Like, yeah, man, Friday, weekend coming because you have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to do things. And as I got older, I realized, like, I, I have no idea what day it was. So Friday, what does that mean? I, do, I, do I work today? What do I do? Grocery shopping? Do my laundry? By the time you do some errands, there goes your Saturday, right? So, yeah, it's, just, uh, it's tough to be doing the whole 9 to 5 for a long time until you're 70 or whenever the retirement age is now, 65. Uh, you know, if, you're, if you've already done it, then, you know, you put in the hard work, it's time to enjoy yourself for sure. Uh, would you say are there any downsides to retiring early? 
I'm sure there is, of course, but I think the upsides outweigh the downsides. The only downside that I would say retiring early would be the uncertainty of income, right? So if you're not fully set yet, if you're not quite ready to retire early and you don't plan on having some kind of passive income, and if you just quit on life itself, then of course that's a downside. But I think if you have a proper plan and understand your finances a little bit, and I'm not talking about being like a some kind of guru, but just to basic, you know, cost of living, you did the math, you know how much you're going to spend a month and you have some saving in case something happens. Maybe you have a house that's a backup plan in case everything hits the fan. Now you have to sell your home and you have a whole bunch of money now and you can reinvest in something else. There's, there's a million different ways, guys. If you sit down and you want something, you can make anything happen. Even with this channel, my goal initially was to get maybe 10,000 subscribers. And my goal was to make only, let's say, one third of what I'm making now through YouTube. And then I was going to work on the side. But now as the channel has grown, I can see that it's possible. It's manageable. It's doable. If you put in the effort, just like anything in life, if, if you're a little bit heavy, go to the gym. And when you put in the work, you see the results. It's not that difficult. Now, if, if you can't read English, you start reading the alphabet. You start picking up, hey, I understand A, B, C, D. If you can't shoot a basketball and you keep missing, if you, the more you practice, the better you get, right? because you focus on it. And the same with anything else in life, retiring early. If that's something you really want, if you focus on it, you can find ways to retire early for sure. Yeah, exactly. That's what we're telling. Yo, Andy Perez here. Yo, Alec, what's up? <laughs> I, I added the what's up part, but I know what you meant. <laughs> Stop sweating those women out there. <laughs> Trust me, guys, the women are not sweating. I'm a very, I think Andy's been talking to me, talking to me about the women I interview on the streets. Sometimes I put them on the spot with difficult questions. But trust me, I never, ever, like, I can read the room really well, guys. So you don't see the before and the after in some of these videos. When the camera's on, sometimes they're shy. And I always ask the people, is it okay if I use the video? So they always give me permission. So if, not, if they don't like it, if they made a mistake or they something, I never use that footage. They don't want me to use it. So I think Andy's just referring to the fact that I go out on the streets and ask difficult questions, and the Filipinos always laughing and giggling and sweating when I ask them these questions. A uh, word like chesa. I don't like using the term retired. I prefer to say I do what I want, I'm no longer working for the man. Exactly. So regardless of what you call it, that's exactly what we're talking about in this video. Retirement doesn't mean to go sit on a beach for the rest of your days until you pass. I'm talking about living for yourself and not having to work for the man. So World Light Chaser has said exactly what I've been trying to say. Uh, thank you, World Light Chaser. We got 40 people watching this. Let's take a quick second to do a plug here, guys. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, and please, con please, <clears throat> please consider becoming a member of the channel. We can get a lot of perks. Uh, I put the link in the description here, wherever I had the chance. Take a look at that because... I do offer a lot for those prices, especially the one-on-one -on -one consultation. I heard somebody paid, I'm not going to mention the YouTuber's name, but I saw a guy on the street. He told me how much he paid him to sit down for one hour video call. And the YouTuber in this situation was not helpful to him at all. They didn't provide any information and it seemed like he was always looking to leave the chat. So no, this is actually in-depth one-on-one -on -one helping you with anything from retirement, not retirement, <laughs> from how to how to get here, uh, dating, of course, red flags, if how to start a YouTube channel, perhaps, uh, maybe you don't know where to live in Cebu City, how to rent without being scammed, so uh, where to even stay, some of the people that come here, they don't even know what area to stay, so the one-hour consultation would cover all those things, take a look at the membership if you're interested, let's go back to the questions, uh, Craigslist Kijiji says, how much would you, would a night out for you, why can't I read? Craigslist says, how much would you a night out for you to cost? Thanks, man. I appreciate that question. Kim, here, man. Craigslist Kijiji, send me an email. Email. <laughs> send me an email, and I'll tell you how to write a question. This is my buddy. Don't worry, guys. I will not be this rude to somebody. Uh, Craigslist says, how much would it cost, like a night out for you? So for me, a night out would be something like this. So let me explain my night, night out. A night out for me, let me just put an imaginary like female in the situation, okay? So if I were to be out on a date with someone, I probably, the only thing I would do is to go out to eat dinner and maybe a coffee after, and then uh, I'm going to, yeah, so let's just stay with those two things. So I don't know anywhere fancy, so let's say 
dinner costs anywhere from 20 to 40 bucks. And that's just because I'm trying to eat something nice, you know, like really nice. Even le- it's probably way less than that. And then coffee, another ten dollars. So no more than 50 bucks. So and even if I'm drinking, drinks here are inexpensive. But let's say I don't drink. But if somebody wants to go out, have like uh, some some drinks at, at a lounge or somewhere or go to like Icon, the bar or the club that's here. Honestly, you can have a night out for about 50 bucks. And that's nothing. And that's like, I'm just giving you a random number. So through 2,500 pesos, for 3,000 pesos, you can have a good night out. And it's not that expensive if you're just trying to have a good time. Ha, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Uh, Craigslist Kajisa, how much would it cost to take you out for a night? You want to take me out? I'm priceless, bro. You can't, you can't afford me. Mm-mm. I'm special. <laughs> so all jokes aside, let's get back to the real question, the why or the real topic, why you should try to retire early. Number seven, why should you retire early is volunteering opportunities. A lot of times, all of us want to give back to our community. Many of us, actually, if not all of us. Um, they, we want to help those around us. We want to help those that are less fortunate. And when you come to the Philippines, you're going to see a lot of that. And you might want to be involved in the community. Now, being retired will give you the chance to do that. It gives you the time and the energy to go ahead and make a difference in your community or just volunteering in something that you've always been passionate about, right? So um, the seventh reason to retire early is volunteer opportunities. You can start helping out everything that is important to you. So maybe it's like a animal shelter or maybe it's just orphanage that there's many of them here schools right maybe you want to spend some time teaching for free for someone to improve their language skills so they can maybe pass an exam or something so they can get better education there's all kinds of things so that is number seven we have eight nine and ten to go we're at 41 minutes perhaps we can do this for an hour um i'll be yeah we'll be going on until the questions run out if you guys have anything else you want to talk about, not retirement related, I'm always open to accept those questions as always. And one more sip of water, and we'll get to number eight. Can you guys hear that? No? Well, if you can't hear it, it's just like a banging, hammering. It's been going on for a long time because they're building another condo right across from here. So in Cebu City, there's always something going up in construction, which is a good thing, I guess. But I'm just, it just makes me wonder how they're going to even talk, I mean, fix the traffic situation. The more condos, the more people, the more cars on the road. And I've yet to see any kind of plan about improving traffic situation in Cebu City. But I guess uh, they must have some kind of plan. Anyway, if you can hear the banging, there's just some construction outside my place. Uh, what are red flags? What red flags do you look for when you're out on a date? Um, there's a lot, but some red flags for me are people that don't appreciate my time, uh, show up late. I can't stand that. I just can't stand that. Lack of communication, not telling you that they're late. Oh, I'm going to be 20 minutes late, 30 minutes late, 50 minutes late. People that don't even offer to pay, even, even if they don't have money. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, there's too many. I don't want to get negative stuff. It's just, yeah, I'm not bash at women, but there's a lot of red flags. I'm going to do an entire video series on red flags and why they are red flags and what they represent by not doing something. Um, why are you tripping? Ayo, what's going on? Why are you tripping? Not much. Uh, Billy says, a uh, different question is the, different question. Is there an abundance of condos for rent in your city? Where do you look for a place? Facebook? Billy, there's so many places here to rent. So if you go on anywhere on Facebook, even in this building alone, there's a lot of places to rent because what happens, many people buy these units when they're not even in the country or they move abroad. A lot of people, like investors, there's a lot of condos available for rent. And that's why I don't understand the cost of condos here. So comparing to other Asian countries, the supply and demand doesn't make any sense to me. So there's an abundance of condos, yet the prices are very high. So I don't know if people are just hoping that they catch one random foreigner and that's why the prices are high, that they'd rather have the place sit empty for months and then rent it for a little bit more expensive. It doesn't make any sense to me, but there's a lot of condos here. There, on the 
especially like for Horizon 101, which is the tallest condo I think in in Cebu City. There's like literally hundreds of units. It feels like it every time you go on these sites. Horizon 101 has a lot, a lot of open units. All the um, Avita Towers. So there's like about four Avita Towers in IT Park. There's always units for rent in any of them, and a lot of them. So those ones for sure. Persimmon is another one. Um, I'm not going to name condos by names, but like there's so many of them available here, yet the prices are all high compared to what you get for it. Most of them, the studio units are ranging about 500 USD, and it has nothing inside except for like a small little tiny kitchen. And sometimes they want you to pay the condo dues. So I'm like, I'm not paying that. Just incorporate into the price. It's just from principle. I don't know why. It makes sense to me. <laughs> so, and then of course, um, there there's just so many condos here. So yeah, a lot of them. How do I rent? I usually go through Airbnb or Facebook, and I usually contact the owner directly. I don't deal with agents sometimes, but most of the time I can't. Especially in the Philippines, they want six months or two a year. Doesn't make sense to pay a middleman a one month because they're not going to do it. They just want more money, obviously. So I contact the owner directly. A word of light chaser. Where would you live? In the island of Cebu, other than Cebu City or Mac 10. I like Cebu City because it has the mall that's near me, the Island Mall Center, the IT Park. I maybe just come comfortable here. I, I don't even I've been to Mac 10 a couple times, but I think Mac 10 is more like a resort area, island kind of thing. Um yeah, I like Cebu City, but you can like whatever, I guess, wherever you're comfortable. But I know a lot of people live in Mac 10 area. Lots of condos available for rent over there as well. Are pets allowed in condos? Yeah, some of them. Some of them, like this one here, pets are allowed for sure. Some of them, pets are not allowed. The one cool thing about the Philippines, pets are allowed inside of malls too, but they got to have a diaper on, which is kind of funny seeing the dogs with diapers on. But yeah, pets are allowed here. I have not heard dogs barking though, so that's a good thing. Yeah, some condos allow pets, some condos don't. Fresh Aloha is here. Hi, buddy. Just hit the like button on the way in. <laughs> Um, I'll be there in Leyte in August. Can't wait. Planning on building a house there with my Filipina. Enjoy your channel. Thanks, bro. Thank you so much, Fresh Aloha. May you have a happy life with your Filipina and build that house and enjoy your time in Leyte. Um, yeah, I'll be here for sure in August. So, yeah, maybe we'll run into each other. August is not that far away because right now it's June is almost ending, July. So, six weeks basically here in August. So, not far away. All right, so 45 people watching this, how to or why you should retire early. Let's kind of go over the first seven notes, uh, things that we talked about. Ten reasons to retire early if you're in a position to do so are financial independence, pursuing your passions, time with loved ones, improved work-life balance, uh, reduced stress, travel and exploration was the last one, and volunteer to give back. So when you retire early, you can do all those things that we just listed. Let's go to number eight, personal development. You can really focus on yourself. If you're retired, let's start with the basic health things such as your physical wellness and fitness. A lot of times people don't want to go to the gym because they're too tired from work. Now, now you don't have to go to the gym to lift weights, but even just do some cardio just to improve your flexibility. Maybe you want to lose about 10 pounds. Whatever your goal is at the gym, you can do it because now you have a lot more time. So that excuse will be out of the way and there shouldn't be anything left uh, to use as an excuse not to go to the gym. So that's just one thing of improvement. Maybe you want to improve your skills, social skills. You never had a chance to go out because you're always working now. You finally have some time to go and socialize with some colleagues or you know, friends or just random people. You start joining things that you would normally not do because you had to work all the time. Maybe you join like a book club, maybe like speed dating if you're single, maybe you go to uh, like a movie night with other people that are interested in like Star Wars, I don't know, but regardless, you have a chance to improve yourself. Maybe you always wanted to learn how to code, you're just interested in coding and you, now you have time to learn how to code and, you know, maybe you want to know how chat GPT works or whatever it is, you can definitely start focusing on yourself and develop those things that you always wanted to within yourself. Maybe you want to learn another language, right? I've always wanted to learn Spanish. Never had time because I'm working. Now I'm starting to learn Spanish. So 
when you have free time, when you retire early, you can really start to focus on yourself to better yourself in whichever way you want to. So, yeah. Why are you tripping? I've never been to a gym a day in my life. I don't want to ruin my streak. <laughs> Good point. Hey, maybe you don't need to go to the gym, right? Some people don't need to. Some people don't want to. A lot of people just simply don't have the time. But retiring early can at least eliminate that excuse of not having time. Um, that's it, guys. Ten more minutes, maybe. Maybe longer. We have 44 people watching. Take a second to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Feel free to use the super chat and super stickers. Uh, and if not, then we're going to continue down the list. And we have two or three more things to get through of why you should retire early, not just in the Philippines, guys, anywhere. So you can forget the Philippines part. Retiring early can just mean staying in your home country. Maybe you want to garden. I don't know. Maybe you want to take a road trip for like a month to go see the Grand Canyon. You know, there's a lot of things that people want to do, but work is what's holding them back, right? So if you can get rid of that and start focusing on yourself and seeing the world the way you want to, why not? Because tomorrow is never promised, guys. Don't forget that. A world light chaser. My doctor in the U.S. said I had two choices. Continue with the road I was on and die or choose life health is my greatest priority. Can't spend money when you're dead. Exactly, guys. You know, that's the other thing. We're saving up money, right? Working, working, saving money if you can. What is it all for <laughs> if you can't spend it or enjoy it? What, what's the point of making a million dollars and you only have two weeks to spend it? Really, think of it that way. What's the point of like having money but you can't even get out of bed because your health is so bad? So it's just some of these things make no sense to me. So as World of Light said, he chose to live and he wants to like be healthier. So I agree completely. Next, <clears throat> number nine embracing the simple lifestyle maybe being retired now that you're not chasing money allows you to enjoy the simpler things in life so when the previous eight or nine things are out of the way that we talked about like stress flexibility all the stuff you can really focus on enjoying simple things having a daily routine you know maybe you enjoy watching soap operas dramas you can actually sit down and enjoy it without worrying about oh, am i wasting too much time today on watching TV because I have to work tomorrow. Uh, simple things like going to a cafe or having a coffee and just people watching, you know? Going for a walk in the park and not worrying about what time it is I got to get back so I can finish that thing I'm supposed to do for work, you know? Uh, taking a weekend trip somewhere that you normally wouldn't do because it's too time consuming. Um, any small little home improvement project, you know, you've always wanted to like improve your kitchen or your, your bathroom and you just haven't had the time, you know? Because retiring doesn't always necessarily mean going on a beach somewhere. It means to really cut yourself away from that 9 to 5 stress, if you could do that earlier, to really start to appreciate your life. You know, maybe you want to start baking. You know, you've always been into, like, baking cookies and cakes, but it takes too much time and effort, and you just don't want to, you know, do it because you're tired. So you can really start doing things and enjoy the simple things in life. And I can't take your money with you when you die. It's just true. Like, there's no point of taking your money <laughs> when you're dead, right? Uh, fresh hello. Hi, buddy. Speaking of the gym, I'm 58 years old and I still and still inclined bench press over 300. Wow. 10 times easy and cardio four times a week. Extremely important for your health. Just saying. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. I mean, I, God, I hate the gym. I can't stand the gym, but I go just because I know it's important just to even cardio wise. You guys, spend 30 minutes on an elliptical a treadmill, a stationary bike. Just to remind your heart, hey, guys, we're still alive. Let's keep pumping this blood in and blood out so you can live another five or ten years to enjoy all the time you put into work. So all that hard work you did, you don't want to just pass away because you've been sitting in a chair most of your life and been too busy to take care of your body or something. You know, So it is important to focus on your health. And I wish I was more aware of this when I was younger because it would have been so much easier. And luckily, it's never too late. Don't forget that. No matter how old you are, how big you are, it's never too late. He always sees inspirational videos of somebody losing like 200 pounds. Yeah, if they can do it, so can you. They sell the same body features. They have arms and legs. The only difference is they wanted to, they were motivated to, and anybody can lose weight. Uh, Ram Cebu says, hi, I love your channel. Have you established with a local doctor there for routine check? Nah, ain't nobody getting checked up. I'm like, I'm healthy as a horse. And a routine one? Never. <laughs> well, thank you. First of all, thank you 
for watching the channel. I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. I haven't seen a regular doctor. I haven't seen a doctor in probably 10 years, to be honest. I know. It's horrible. I should get checked out. I was supposed to do it in Thailand. I don't know what happened with that, Craigslist Kijiji. Um, yeah, I was supposed to get checked up and do blood work and just see what's going on, everything. But honestly, uh, I don't know what happened. Kind of went to the way. I don't have any health issues, so I think that's the problem. Sometimes us men especially, we don't go to a doctor. Never see a doctor, be a man, right? So <laughs> just fix it yourself. But no, I haven't seen a regular doctor. If you have one to recommend, please let us know. Maybe we could all just get a checkup if we're here in Cebu. Uh, Christian said hello or hi, hello. <laughs> but believe the greatest muscle is the right. I can't read anymore. But I believe the greatest muscle is right between your ears. Keep up the great content. Thank you, Fresh Aloha. Speaking of great content, today after the meetup, I'm going to edit a video and put it out. And we're going to talk to Filipinos on the streets street interviews, asking them what they like and dislike about their own country, right? So we always talk about foreigners, what they like. Today, we're going to flip it, flip the script, ask the Filipinos what they like and dislike about their country. Why are you tripping? How many years you got? How old are you? I am 36, 36 years old. Doesn't even sound right. I feel so old. <sighs> Thanks for reminding me, bro. I ruined my whole day. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, I'm 36. Let's go on to um, the last point I have here, and then we could have some free talk, and then we can call this a day. Number 10 reason why you should retire early, freedom and autonomy. <laughs> Obviously, uh, when you retire early, you have complete freedom to do whatever you want. If you can do any of the stuff we talked about up until the 10th point, freedom of just doing whatever you want when you retire. You can travel. You can stay at home. You can meet people, you can learn a new language, you can pick up gardening, a new hobby. You can just stay at home all day in your pajamas. Don't do shite, don't do nothing, right? So that is what retirement early can provide for you. And sometimes you need those mental breaks. You need that disconnect. Maybe you don't want to use your phone at all today, right? You can do that and really focus on yourself and what makes you happy, on uh, all the things that you missed out when you were, when you were working previous 35 40 years so yeah those are some things those are the top 10 things if you have anything i missed of why you should retire early like go ahead and tell me and yeah mess that world world light chaser filipino doctors tend to have shorter fingers so it's a less <laughs> it's less invasive ha ah, you're talking about butt check right some butt probing hmm nasty i don't know anything about that but nobody getting near my ass that's all i know not even a doctor nope i'm not getting that check uh homesteader i just wanted to live in a nice condo with a pool gym nearby and good restaurants and eat every day uh, hang with some expats and chase filipinas then i recommend living near isla mall isla center there are hotels and condos connected directly to the mall and that's where you can find everything you just mentioned homesteader um take a look at i can't remember the name of it but just look at any condo that's within ayala business park okay so and even it park but for what you said probably ayala business park chasing filipinas huh <laughs> uh world light chase i love turning my phone off and leaving it in the house old school i like that you know i met somebody the other day older gentleman they don't know what to do with his phone so it's pretty funny to see not funny but it just kind of reminded me not not everybody's very tech savvy right so um yeah sometimes if you could just take a break from your phone it's amazing uh philip massey the best reason to retire early you can't buy time and like you said there's no guarantee for how long you have that's the other very true thing. So you cannot buy time. What are you going to do with your money? You, you ran out of time at some point. So you might as well just spend it on yourself, right? And quit if you can, retire early and live your life. You're not guaranteed another day. So no point of that. We got 45 people watching this. We ain't going nowhere. So guys, hit the like button. Consider becoming a member of the channel to get a lot more behind the scenes and other perks. 
And if you have any questions about this topic or any other topic, feel free to ask them. We're still going strong. It's still rather early. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning here. My meetup is until 1 o'clock. So if you guys have any questions, comments, want to know anything about the Philippines, feel free to ask them. Um, I mentioned about video coming out later today. It's going to be exciting. And yeah, I, I'm like, you know, full steam ahead with this YouTube channel thing. I'm going to try to grow it as much as possible. And with the help of you guys watching these, asking questions and supporting as always, which is great. The 10 things I have are complete. Um, a quick recap for those that just joined. 10 reasons to retire early are financial independence. You can pursue your passion. You have time with the loved ones. You can improve your work-life balance. You can reduce the stress of your life. Most of us just stress that with work, right? Um, you can travel and explore for sure. A volunteer and give back. You can personal development. You can improve yourself in many ways. Embrace a simple lifestyle, right? When you're retired, you can just enjoy the small things in life much more. And lastly, complete freedom. You have freedom to do whatever you want, whenever you want. You can go wherever, do whatever. Because you know what? You're still you're relatively young if you retire early. You have your body, your mind. Because don't forget, it's not just your body. Sometimes your mind starts to go as you get older too. So uh, what if all the things you wanted to do is too late? You know, I don't want to scare people or be so negative. But honestly, just if you can re retire early, do it. Num, num, num. Water. <laughs> so why you tripping? Says, how much would it cost for gym membership and a personal trainer in the Philippines? Like I said, I've never been to the gym, so I wouldn't know uh, what to do with any equipment, LOL. So the good thing with the... Yeah, if you're serious, when I was younger, I used to think, why would I ever pay for a personal trainer? Just go look on YouTube or something, right? Yeah. For the, I mean, you could do that, but personal trainers, what they do, they can really motivate you, number one. They can give you a reason because you've paid for it, <laughs> second thing. Um, and they could do a proper plan for you so you can really focus on the areas that you want to. And hopefully they can teach you how to obviously use the machine. And, but the gym prices here are a bit expensive, I think. Last I heard, which was last year, it was, was 3,000 pesos a month, which is about 60 US dollars, right? So that's pretty expensive for the Philippines. So I don't even know how much the personal trainer would be. The one thing I would recommend is to find a condo with a gym. So that way you don't have to worry about if you're going to plan on going to the gym anyways, you can kind of incorporate that into your cost per month. It's much better. Uh, why Trippin says, wish I was in the Philippines to go to the meetup. Maybe next time. Yeah, definitely. Come on by. Craigslist Kijiji says, Alex, sorry to ask such an awkward question. Do you offer any services to meet ladies like a paid wingman? I don't offer those services, but for <laughs> I can assist people like for the private jet memberships class that offers one hour of video call with myself. That could be something we talk about exactly um, how to meet a woman, which sites to use to meet a woman, how to set up your profile, what red flags to watch out for, and what to say to women that you really want to meet, the type of woman. Um, like a million different things we could talk about. So aside from the services, I also offer just straight up $100 for one hour consultation to talk about any of these topics. So if dating is one of them, you can consider that as well. My email, I've always included in my description, but it's talknowcanada at gmail.com. Uh, so, and that's the other thing, a dating website, I've been thinking about, not really thinking about it, but the thought has crossed my mind to start a dating website because I, I interview so many women out here and I interview so many guys as well. All these women want to meet guys. All these guys want to meet women. And I'm literally the middleman here. So why not kind of somehow like make that happen, right? So it's a lot of work, but maybe something in the future. Who knows? Um, that was, uh, where's an awkward question that was asked by Craigslist? Oh, there we go. Um, speaking of, I don't know, if maybe too early to mention this, but big things are happening on the channel in August as well. But that's later, later, later. Um, Philip Massey says, I know you interview a lot of people, but have you had anyone turn the table to ask you any awkward questions? Huh, that's a great question, Philip Massey. Never. Nobody's asked me an awkward question. They ask about the regular type of things. Oh, how long have you been doing this? Oh, what kind of questions will you ask me? And I always tell them I'm not going to tell you. 
but if you don't want me to use the video, we won't use it because I want that authentic interaction, right? So um, I'm trying to think. No, never, honestly. I've never been asked an awkward question. Um, no, that's it. <laughs> really, this is, I wish there was a story there, but there isn't. Oh, so yeah, Philip Massey referring to Craigslist Kijiji's awkward question. Why are you tripping? Says, I wouldn't get a personal trainer in Canada because it's too expensive. I just assumed it would be cheaper in the Philippines. I guess I was wrong. Um, it's definitely cheaper than Canada. I just don't know how much cheaper. The gym membership monthly isn't cheaper, but the personal trainers, I feel like, find one um, for cheaper. But Ah, that's a good one. Alex, <laughs> Philip Massey says, Alex's top 10 pickup questions. So my number one pickup line, let's say, is if I'm seeing somebody at Starbucks, I ask them if they know where Starbucks is, and they get so weirded out because we're in Starbucks. No, I'm joking. I don't. I don't have really a pickup line. I honestly don't know. Like, there's no... I'm trying to think if I were interested in somebody on the street, what I'd say to them. Oh. I'll just be like, excuse me, um, I lost my phone number. Can I have yours? And they're like, ha, such a dad joke, right? That's pretty funny. I don't know. I don't have pickup lines. I don't know how to do that. Just talk to people, I guess. <laughs> hmm, paid wingman. Now, that sounds like a job I would like. Yeah, for sure, right? That'd be a great job. And pay for my expenses, too. Um, <laughs> just to go to the club or whatever. A wingman. Hmm. A wingman abroad. New channel coming up, guys. <laughs> All right, so one hour, six minutes, over 40 people watching this. I'm running out of things to talk about, guys. I don't want to hold you guys up by just me listening to the sound of my own voice. So if you guys have any questions, please feel to ask them. Feel free to ask them. Um, anything you want to mention, talk about, I'm here. Hey, that's a great, uh, great video idea. Now... I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but one of the membership levels, you get to pick the videos I make. So that could be one of them for sure. Um, maybe I can ask them what's the best pickup line they've heard. That might be cool, right, to give guys ideas. Um, yeah, pickup lines are weird. I think they're so not outdated, but I guess if, if it's too cheesy, it could really backfire or the girl might think it's funny and corny enough that they'll talk to you. I don't think there's any wrong pickup line, to be honest, as long as you break the ice and engagements with someone the rest can be easily sorted out for sure <laughs> awesome wingman abroad is perfect hey look who's here east coast refugee one of our members thanks for being here east coast refugee uh, do you have a carry-on or what's your luggage situation i was curious now yeah good question up until last year before i went to india i had one suitcase and one carry-on because my whole life was in there right and I have two laptops and I have some gears like camera, tripod, whatever. And, of course, my clothes I need to wear. Aside from that, I don't want to carry anything else, really. So, But I still needed that suitcase and the carry-on plus a smaller backpack. But when I went to India, the roads were so bad in India that the carrying that suitcase, even from the taxi to the hotel or from hotel to the bus stop or whatever, it was just a pain. I got rid of the suitcase so i now have like a big rucksack like the you know camping backpacks i became a backpacker overnight without choosing so the backpacker backpacks and another small um backpack that's it so i have my laptops in the smaller one the carry-on and i have the big one that has my whole life in it so though but ideally the dream which won't be happening probably because i um, been away from Canada for like two years, so everything that is important to me is with me, and I just need space. But ideally, it would be just one carry-on. And if I could somehow downsize to just one carry-on, it would be great. It would be awesome. But the other thing is I travel, like I'm a very slow traveler, so let's say I stay somewhere two months or three months or one month. Um, it's not that bad because... At least if I'm carrying all that, it's not like every day, every week or something like that. It's like once every two or three months. Craigslist Kijiji says, what do you usually eat during the day? 
uh, I don't know what I eat. I have bad habit in the mornings. I, I I have a small piece of like bread or cinnamon bun or something with coffee, and then I don't eat nothing till like four, five. I don't know. I have very bad eating habit. I eat a lot of salty snacks. I shouldn't like a small bag of ding dong or whatever randomly. I try to eat fruits like mangoes and apples, but when I eat dinner, I have like a big meal usually. So, and I just go out to buy some food from either the night market, which has a variety of foods, or just like the pizza store here. Um, they also have like Jollibee and KFC and all the fast food you can find anywhere. Uh, I don't know. I don't have like, a, but sometimes lately I've been cooking. I just make some beef. Like I buy just beef from the store and I make like a fruit salad and beef with not much seasoning. So I put the beef in the cooker. Add a little bit of soy sauce and a little bit of hot sauce and let that simmer for about 15 minutes. Some protein and some fruit salad. So then I feel good. I'm like, oh, I ate kind of healthy. And then it's like 8 to 11 o'clock at night from boredom, I eat bags of salty chips. Or not chips, but some other crap. It's not good. Yeah. The worst answer ever. Why are you tripping? Would the Philippines be okay with a suitcase on wheels? I think Manila, etc. is okay, but I'm thinking about islands like Palawan. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Like, the suitcase is going to lose its wheel. You're going to drag it across. It's going to get dirty and scratched all over the place. It would be okay, but not ideal. You know, it's like, because usually you're not walking for too long. You get one of the tricycles, and you just put your bag on there and drive to the next place. I mean... I'd recommend having not a suitcase, but you can still manage with a suitcase, especially if you're just visiting, right, for a few weeks, but that's it. Yeah, it's just hard to say because, yeah, there's no sidewalk in a lot of these places. Even if there's a sidewalk, there's no paved sidewalk, no smooth paved with no cracked sidewalk. So it's hard to drag a suitcase with wheels, especially in Palawan Islands or other places, man. Yeah. Why is the audience getting bigger? 44 people on the channel, welcome. We're just talking about 10 reasons to retire early. We covered everything by now. If you wanna know those reasons, please rewind and watch this from the beginning. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you're watching but haven't had a chance to hit the like button, please do so. Um, I'm gonna to have to think about topics for these live streams, guys. If you guys ever want me to cover a specific topic on a live stream, send me an email. Maybe you guys can join me on a stream like Aaron did last time. Uh, we can be a guest. Um, let, send me an email. Share your story. Maybe your concerns. Or we just want to be on here for 20 minutes saying hello to the other subscribers. Anything you want. Uh, the American Vagabond Abroad says suitcase on wheels is fine. Just carry as needed. Yeah, so you might have to drag it for a while, carry it for a while, drag it for a while, carry it for a while. So, yeah, it's doable, but just keep in mind. All right. I don't know what to talk about. One hour, 12 minutes. I think we've uh, milked this topic as much as possible. Long story short, who wouldn't want to retire early, right? And once again, retirement in this video is not just sitting on a beach. I'm talking about not working a regular nine to five job for somebody else. So maybe just reducing your own work hours, maybe working for yourself or just um, you know having passive income and just living the way you want to live earlier. Uh, American Vagabond Abroad says, I regretted heavy backpack through airports, prefer suitcase. But the airport is such a small time of your travel, right? So, and not only that, they have carts usually that's for free. Like, you just get one of those and you'll be all right. But to each his own. I prefer to have a suitcase, to be honest, but it's just the places I visited recently, it was really difficult to carry that around. Hmm. That's it. All right, guys. Thank you for being here. I appreciate all of you guys for watching, for commenting, asking questions, for the continued support. I'm going to go to the meetup in a few hours, so maybe I'll see some of you guys there. Maybe there won't be anybody there because sometimes, you know, people are not in the exact same place and time as you are. And a video coming out tonight about Filipinos telling me what they like and dislike about the Philippines. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.